Hey guys, what's up? So I've had the vanilla root box from my Samsung Galaxy S2, the international variant, which is the i9100 for the past uh, week now, actually for the past few days. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm going to be giving a quick review of the ROM itself. So stay tuned for that. So hey guys again, so we've got here the vanilla root box uh, ROM. It's running on Android 4.2.2 so we can check it out in the settings quickly and 4.2.2 so what's so interesting about this vanilla root box ROM okay it's an AOKP ROM meaning that it has added additional modifications to the Android uh, OS such as uh, you they have added um, performance tweaks and um, certain user, user interface uh, differences. First and foremost, let's, go, let's check out the, the lock screen. So this is the typical lock screen you get on the Nexus 7, the Nexus 4, or any official Android uh, smartphone. So as you can see, you can easily uh, browse through the different uh, widgets here. Um, this is actually a custom widget which can also, which is added onto the vanilla root box ROM due to the AOKP um, code. So if once we unlock this, let's go back. Oh yeah, check this out. It says wired mash down there. That's the network carrier uh, line, right? You can actually add your own uh, network uh, text there. Carrier, sorry, your own text. So first and foremost, it looks very similar to the typical Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean user interface. The difference is that it's highly customizable. You can check if you, if you check out the notification bar on top, you can easily notice that the date and the time is located in the middle, rather on the right, and the battery. Yeah, and I just received a new email, and the battery is has its own has its own uh, battery percentage. We'll check that out later on. So let's pull down on the notification bar. As you can see, uh, I'm not running the typical, um, what do you call, toggle, shortcut toggles. These are the shortcut toggles uh, which are provided on the vanilla root box settings. So again, we still have the notifications over here. So we can easily put remove that. So let's put that, pull that all the way up. So as you can see, it's pretty smooth. It's very fluid. I like the animations. And it's extremely fast compared to the TouchWiz, sorry, the TouchWiz user interface from Samsung. So let's see what else we have. So this is pretty cool. This is called Pi. So you, all you have to do is swipe from the bezel. So you, and you get this interesting um, uh, user interface, giving a quick, um, uh, details about your current notifications, the time, and uh, the date, and how much battery remaining. So you swipe down, goes away. That's called Pi, and that's included in the vanilla root box ROM. So moving on, you can actually, I'll give you guys a quick tour of the settings. This is where all the action is going on. So go to ROM control. This is the AOKP ROM control settings. Let's check out the interface. You can, you can have your own custom boot animation. Again, you can add your own carrier label. Uh, you can actually change the transparency settings of the notification bar on top. So moving down, you can also add a tablet or the tablet interface. So if a specific app supports a certain uh, the interface for tablets such as the Nexus 7, you can get the same interface on this phone. On, I mean on the vanilla root box, of course. So that's basically about it with the general user interface. There's a lock screen options. You can also add your own lock screen shortcuts similar to uh, the TouchWiz, the Jelly Bean version of TouchWiz, but I think you can add up to six six different shortcuts so there's the power menu this is pretty cool so if we press the power menu we've got all these options now we've got power off reboot airplane mode screenshot screenshot sorry torch and uh, sound options uh, navigation bar so if you can you can actually add a navigation bar 
So, see, as you can see, we've got a navigation bar down here. But of course, it's wasting a lot of space, so I'm gonna remove it. So we've got the navigation ring, which I haven't even figured out how to use properly. We've got toggles, as I mentioned earlier on, in regards to the navigation toggles. Uh, moving on, we've got a battery option, so we can select different battery icon styles. So we can sort of have a speedometer, as you can see, it has changed to that specific uh, style. And uh, we can check out the clock settings, we can move it around the screen in different areas, whether it's left, right, middle, center, you can add the day of the week, a.m., p.m., etc. Signal, yeah, we can also, instead of having the typical uh, bar sort of style uh, signal meter, we can have it as in DBM style. And uh, let's see, sound, yeah, we've got a typical sound here, and enable volume panel. So I haven't really touched these uh, settings. So we've got vibrations. Uh, yeah, you can create your own vibrations actually. So check this out, record. So I'm like, tap, 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 stop. You can play it. So it plays it out for you. You can save it and you can uh, load it up as your default vibration. So moving on, there are different themes from Vanilla Rootbox. Performance control. So this is where you can actually control your your CPU usage automatically or you can do it manually, you can uh, overclock it. So device options, under device options here we have the options for the Samsung Galaxy S2 which you can play around with again. So we can check out the root box settings. So as I, as I said earlier, there's Pi control which is simply moving up the bezel and you get that Pi control that's called Pi. You can change the LCD density, the different DPI depending on the apps. You have low battery warning, you can have the expanded desktop, hold back to kill, so you press the hold button for a long time and it will kill all the apps. And uh, again, lock screen targets, as I mentioned earlier on, lock screen shortcuts. And you can, this is pretty cool, so if it's called lock screen see-through. So what you'll do is, so if, if you try to get back into the lock screen, you can see a preview of how your screen looks behind. So reading SMS, show Wi-Fi network name, notification shortcuts, notification behavior, clock, you can have headset, um, hardware keys, etc. So you have the whole, it's got so many options over here. We've got the default uh, Settings from Jelly Bean 4.2.2. We've got profiles from Jelly Bean. Um, we've got super user. Yeah, you usually see that for rooted devices. Obviously, this has to be a rooted device to get the vanilla root box. So that's basically about it in regards to the vanilla root box. So I've been using it for the past few days now, and I noticed some issues with it. For example, uh, automatically Gmail doesn't really synchronize for some reason you have to manually synchronize it so don't forget if you're if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna be running vanilla root box for the first time make sure you go to gmail and automatically synchronize it in the settings because otherwise you won't be receiving any mail on your phone or getting any notifications on about it um, battery bar is pretty cool i like the battery bar that's really useful for me and there's another issue with twitter yeah check this out guys so there's, so there's a bit of an issue with Twitter actually um, and the vanilla root box ROM. So if we create a new uh, tweet, the keyboard overlaps the screen so you won't be able to access these controls down here such as adding a photo, a picture, or adding tweets or giving you your location. That's a bug with all the AOKP ROMs right now. Um, there seems to be a signal issue but I'm still observing it. But I guess that's something to do with my network. Not, there, there aren't really any signal issues. So that's basically about it in regards to the vanilla root box row. I have the links provided below. I also have a guide on how to install the vanilla root box row. And I'm just about to run out of battery. So don't forget to like, subscribe. And if you've got any questions or comments, or if you've got any suggestions or on which rooms to review, feel free to post them below. Thanks, guys.